What does a fractional exponent mean? How do we work with it? That's the topic of what we're talking about in this video lesson. Suppose you had an expression like this. Uh, you could have just a number to an exponent, which is a fraction, or you could have an entire expression which has a coefficient and variables with exponents to an exponent that's a fraction. What does that mean? So the first most important thing, and this is how we deal with coefficients or numbers specifically, but really it's understanding that an exponent of one half is equivalent to taking the square root. And an exponent of one third is equivalent to taking a cube root. And that would be true for an exponent of one fourth would be taking a fourth root, one fifth, a fifth root, etc. And if you have a fraction where the numerator is not one, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But understanding that those are equivalent means that this expression is really equivalent to this expression. Eight to the power of one third is the same as the cube root of eight, and we know that that is equal to two. And 64 to the power of one half is really the square root. Normally you wouldn't have to write the two, I'm just emphasizing it here, which is equal to eight. And even if your exponent is not written in a fraction form, 0 0.5 I know is equal to one half, that is a square root, and that's equal to 11. And I'll show you two more examples. One, to show you what to do if you had a fraction in there. The rule when you have a fraction to an exponent is that that exponent applies to both the numerator and the denominator. That's the square root of the whole thing. And when I take the square root of a fraction, it's equal to the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. That's 2 over 7. And I had mentioned before that when you have a numerator that isn't 1, things look a little bit different. This is equal to the cube root of, the denominator has the same function, 8 squared, the numerator of your exponent, becomes the power of the base. So I would simplify this first, that's 64, and the cube root of 64 is 4. Generally speaking, when you have a base to a fractional exponent, the denominator is the root, it's going to be the nth root of the base to the power, whatever the numerator is. So this would be equivalent to the nth root of a to the power m. For variables with exponents, it looks kind of like a different rule, but really it means the same thing. So for instance here, really this means the square root of this expression. And for this term, the square root of x to the power 6. I know that the square root of x to the power 6 is really asking me to find an expression that when multiplied by itself is equal to x to the power 6. And I know that that is x to the power 3, because x to the power 3 times x to the power 3 the rule is that I would add exponents, then that's where I get the 6. But a shortcut when you have a power to a power, an exponent raised to another exponent, is that you multiply exponents. So I wouldn't show this step normally, but I'll just show it here for clarity. That means that I would have 6 times 1 divided by 2, times 1 half, and 18 times 1 divided by 2, times 1 half. That's how I end up with this answer here, I wouldn't have to show the step in between. And similarly for an exponent one third, means that I multiply each one of these exponents by one third, a power to a power means I multiply. I end up with x squared and y to the power six. And when I put a full expression together like this, this means that I will have the square root of 36 and the square root of a to the power eight really means that I'm doing eight times one divided by two. I multiply exponents, eight times 1 divided by 2 is 4, and 12 times 1 divided by 2 is 6. So that's how I get that answer there. And similarly, for an exponent 1 third, it means that I'm taking the cube root of the coefficient, cube root of 27, and for my exponents, I multiply 9 times 1 third and 15 times 1 third. That's how I get this answer. So for these examples here, if you want to maybe pause the video for a minute, Give yourself a chance to try them. We'll put the answers up. Again, I'm showing a step that you wouldn't normally show. I would skip right to the answer. I have some things that are including negative exponents, which means they have to move to the bottom. And a negative sign is different than a negative exponent. That just means an actual negative number. And taking the cube root of a negative number just yields a negative number. So hopefully you had a chance to pause and try. Hopefully you got them right. And in a separate video lesson, we'll look at how to deal with the regular exponent laws when the exponents are fractions.